So good morning and welcome to our December edition, our last one for the year of Wake Up Newport. I'm Steve Rosansky, President and CEO of the Newport Beach Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome you all out. It's a little, well, it's getting a little sunny out there. Hopefully we'll have some nice weather today. But uh, thanks for braving uh, the wetter weather that I guess you've been having. I've, I've been gone myself. I've been in London for the last 10 days, so my first day back. But uh, I think we had better weather there than you guys did, so uh, lucky me. In any event, we've got a great program for you here today. Uh, just quickly, uh, Rush Hill's not here. Uh, unfortunately, he, I think he had some minor surgery yesterday. He said something about a deviated septum. Sounds like a nose job to me, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway, he couldn't make it this morning, uh, so I will be uh, 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 introducing our speaker. But before we do that, we have, and I didn't make up a list, so if I miss anybody, uh, my bad, but uh, we have a couple dignitaries with us this morning. First is my good friend and former mayor, Ed Selich, is here. Ed, wave. Thank you. I see in the back there Paul Watkins, our former business person of the year and currently on the Board of Library Trustees. Actually, not the business person of the year, sorry. You are the, the citizen of the year. He was our last just single citizen of the year. This year we have a citizen of the year and a business person of the year, so we've kind of bifurcated the thing. But he would have easily qualified for both, so thanks for coming, Paul. Um, I think that's about it, so let's get going here. Uh, our um, event this morning is sponsored or underwritten by uh, the Southern California Gas Company. So, Lene, if you'd kind of come up here and tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Suppose you're selling a lot of gas with this cooler weather now, that's right? That's right. I know. My bill went up about 50%. <laughs> but it's still probably your cheapest utility it bill, is. right? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Linnea Shields. I'm the Public Affairs Manager with SoCal Gas. I hope you guys all had enough to eat there in the back. I know I had my fair share of coffee having a baby at home. Um, every day, organizations are getting better. As such, SoCal Gas continues to provide affordable, renewable, at, or, if, excuse me, affordable, reliable, and increasingly renewable natural gas to our 21 million customers. Earlier this year, we were thrilled to announce that we have a vision of becoming the cleanest natural gas distribution utility in the United States, providing 20% of renewable natural gas to our customers by 2030. So what is renewable natural gas? Some of you might have seen the little cows there in the back. Renewable natural gas is capturing traditionally produced methane, capturing it, conditioning it, and putting it right back into our pipeline. So think cows, think your green waste, think landfills. Um, this is a perfect and exciting time to learn a little bit more about renewable natural gas. I would like to personally invite all of you to a special event that we have on Monday, December 9th, so this coming up Monday, at the Discovery Cube here in Santa Ana. We will be unveiling a very fun and interactive helicopter tour that talks a little bit more about renewable natural gas, this sustainable and amazing fuel which will be coming to an appliance as Steve mentioned near you so I hope you can all invite us there in the back I have a little bit more information about renewable natural gas I have some flyers um, for the event so thank you very much for having me here and without further ado I will hand it back over to Steve so they take like um, waste and stuff and turn it into gas like so poop to pilot it's like toilet to tap poop to pilot Exactly. Okay. Poop to pilot. So, <laughs> yeah. Can I trademark that poop to pilot? I, I can have T-shirts made and all that. We are a business organization. We need money. Okay. A little levity there. Uh, so now I have the opportunity, or the the distinct opportunity, to introduce our speaker, Cotty Petrie Norris, Assemblywoman. Uh, Cotty was elected to represent California's 74th Assembly District in 2018. Over the course of her first year in office, she has uh, had 11 bills signed into law, including important legislation to combat sea level rise, which is obviously very important to us here in Newport Beach, um, improve services for veterans, expand access to birth control, and save small business owners money, which we 120% support that. As part of the 2019-2020 state budget, uh, Cotty secured $4.5 million to help the Orange County Fire Authority's Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Project uh, to protect, yep, we have a clapping here. Actually, uh, actually, that's one of the dignitaries I forgot to introduce. So Bobby Salerno here is here, right? Where's Bobby? He's uh, the head of the uh, Firefighters uh, Union, so <laughs> Cotty's working for you guys. There you go. Um, uh, where was I? Secured $4.5 to help the Orange County Fire Authority's Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Project 
to protect Southern California from wildfires and $2.9 million to end veteran homelessness in Orange County. I'm sure she's going to tell us a little bit more about that anyway. Uh, she serves as the chair of the Assembly's Accountability and Administrative Review Committee and is chair of the Select Committee on Student Debt. Do we have a few students here? Talk to this woman. She's going to help you. Uh, she also serves on the Assembly's Committees for Appropriations, Judiciary, Revenue, and Taxation and Veteran Affairs um, after working her way through Yale University, so she's politically astute and brilliant, where uh, she double majored in economics and English. Cotty Petrie Norris has had a successful 20-year career in finance and technology. She helped, build, or helped to build businesses and led teams at Fortune 500 companies. Uh, and small st and startups. So she lives in Laguna Beach with her husband Colin, and she has two sons, Dylan and Hayden, and their rescue dog, Flounder. So with that, I give you Assemblywoman Cotty Petrie Norris. Thank you, Steve. Good morning, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here with all of you. And as I've said, I am so thrilled to have so many of uh, our students from Newport Harbor here joining us this, us this morning. Love that you are getting engaged in uh, in business, getting engaged in government, getting engaged in politics. It's uh, it's brilliant. We need more of that. Um, so I am Cotty Petrie Norris, and I represent California's 74th Assembly District, which includes the beautiful city of Newport Beach. It also includes the communities of Laguna Beach, Huntington Beach. Irvine, Costa Mesa, and Laguna Woods. As you heard from Steve in my intro, I was elected to the assembly in 2018. So this week is actually the one year anniversary of my service to this district. And well, thank you. And uh, as you also heard in my introduction, this is the first time I've held elected office. I come from the business world, spent uh, a number of years working in finance and technology for companies big and small. And when I look back on my first year in office, I have a couple of reflections. And the first, really and truly, is that this is an incredible job. And it has been and continues to be an honor and privilege for me to represent the people of this district, to serve the state of California, and to be working on policy issues that are touching 40 million lives and shaping the future of the world's fifth largest economy. It's an incredible opportunity. California is facing some really big challenges right now, and I have welcomed the opportunity and consider it, as I said, an honor and privilege to be your voice at the table as we're talking about how California is going to meet those challenges as we move forward. I also, as I reflect on my first year, I've approached this job not as a political insider. I've approached this job as a mom, as a member of my community, and as a businesswoman. And I think that's given me a unique and I think in many ways a valuable perspective. Um, so what I wanted to do this morning was just share with you some of the, the things that I've been working on and talk about I think three of the, the issues that I think are the biggest challenges confronting California and some of the biggest challenges confronting our community and the work that I've been doing to address those issues. So the first thing that I want to touch on is environmental policy and confronting the climate crisis. I believe that climate change is the fundamental challenge that is facing our generation and the fundamental challenge that's facing your generation as well. As we look across the state of California, we see the ravages of climate change here in our communities and here across our state. We've seen catastrophic wildfires, we see the threat of sea level rise, and we've been confronted time and again with catastrophic droughts. We cannot, we cannot sit back and assume that this is going to take care of itself. Climate change is real, it is now, it is urgent. And California really has been a global leader when it comes to addressing the threat of climate change. We have set some of the most ambitious targets in the world. But as we work to achieve those targets, we also need to ensure that we are working to safeguard California and to mitigate the 
to mitigate the inevitable impacts of climate change. And that is nowhere more true than right here on the California coast. California's coast is 840 miles of breathtaking beauty. It's home to 70% of California's residents, and it's a major driver of California's economy. The reality is that all of this is under threat when we think about sea level rise. Sea levels are expected to rise by five to eight feet in the coming decades. This amount of sea level rise puts millions of people and billions of dollars at risk, which is why it's so critical for us to act on this threat right now. And that's why I introduced AB 65 as actually my very first piece of legislation that I introduced in the assembly. And AB 65 will invest in natural infrastructure solutions to combat and respond to the threat of sea level rise and protect our communities from this catastrophic threat. Another threat that we must respond to with urgency is the risk of wildfires and the wildfires that we've seen sweeping all across this state. When I was elected, one of my first priorities was to ensure that we are supporting our first responders and to ensure that we are investing in innovative technologies to improve our abilities to respond to wildfires. So one of the things I was able to do in my first term was to partner with the Orange County Fire Authority. And I secured $4.5 million in funding for a program that's called the First Responder Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Program. And what this program does is bring military-grade equipment and technology to bear on the way that we respond to and fight wildfires. And the good news is that this system is working. We have seen the system deployed in some of the wildfires that have broken out across Southern California, the Tanaha Fire, the Saddle Ridge Fire, the Tick Fire. And this system has demonstrated its ability to protect property and to save lives. We're actually in a conversation right now about how we can expand the program and how we can secure additional funding in the 2020 budget so that we can continue with this program. The uh, second challenge that I'm very focused on is combating homelessness. So for the very first time, for the very first time across the state of California in communities all across the state in you know, big and small communities, rural and urban, wealthy communities and struggling communities, the number one issue, when you ask people what they're concerned about, the number one issue is homelessness. And that is why the legislature this year, we allocated an additional $2 billion of funding to our local governments in order to enable your local leaders to better respond to homelessness in your community. For me, a real area of focus has been veteran homelessness and ending veteran homelessness here in Orange County. I think that uh, we can all agree that no one who has served our country no one who has sacrificed so much for so many of us should ever find themselves without a roof over their heads. So that has been a priority for me. And I think we've got a video that talks a little bit about the program.
So the, uh, the $2.9 million that I was able to secure in the 2019-2020 budget for the Orange County United Way puts Orange County on track to be only the second community in the entire state to achieve the goal of ending veteran homelessness. And that's something that I'm both really proud of and really excited about. And seeing that project come to fruition has been incredibly fulfilling. When we talk about homelessness, another area of focus for me has been in addressing what is fundamentally a broken system of mental health care and substance abuse treatment here in California. And I don't think we can talk about homelessness without touching on that. In Orange County, approximately 40 to 50% of the individuals who are experiencing homelessness here are also battling a mental health issue, a substance abuse treatment issue, and in some cases, both. When you look at the state of California, we are spending billions and billions of dollars every single year on mental health programs and on substance abuse treatment programs. And the bottom line is, it is not working. So one of the things that, that I did when I took office was to establish for the first time a bipartisan working group in the legislature on substance abuse treatment. Opioid addiction across the country and, and certainly right in our community is a crisis. It is now a top five leading cause of death. And when you look at every stage of this, of this crisis, we've seen people who have been profiteering off of it. We've got pharmaceutical companies who knowingly marketed highly, highly addictive substances we have doctors who have over over prescribed these medicines and we also in our community has been particularly impacted by this we also have a network of shady operators of rogue rehab centers and sham sober living homes who instead of helping people get their lives back on track are exploiting people for profit and what i've learned in the assembly is that the reason the reason that this has been possible is because there is a total lack of regulation and oversight at a state level. And that's an area I've been very focused on. This past session, I was able to pass one bill, uh, which uh, cracks down on a practice called body brokering. And that's important progress, but it's not nearly enough. So next year, along with the bipartisan working group that I have assembled, we are focused on establishing licensing requirements for inpatient and outpatient drug treatment facilities all across the state of California. And this is gonna do a couple things. One, it's gonna raise the standard of care. It's gonna ensure that our state dollars are going to programs that actually work. And it's also going to ensure that some of these, uh, these bad actors who have been really impacting our communities are put out of business. So that is a, a priority focus for me as we move into 2020. Another area of focus for me is ensuring that our tax dollars are spent efficiently and effectively. As I said, I didn't come to this job as a political insider. And I think that that's you know, made me a natural taxpayer advocate. I chair, as, as Steve said in my introduction, I chair a committee that's called the Accountability and Administrative Review Committee. And we are tasked with ensuring that government programs are operating efficiently and effectively. And as a new member of the assembly and, and in my role as chair of this committee, I've got a couple of observations. And you know, I think that we pass a lot of laws. We have a lot of press conferences. We do not always do a very good job in the, in the legislature. We don't do a good job of looking back and saying, did that law get implemented? Did the money end up going where it's supposed to go? And most importantly, is that money having the impact that it was supposed to have? So as my chair of the Accountability and Administrative Review Committee, that is my top priority as we move into 2020, ensuring that we build in a regular review and evaluation cycle so that we can make sure that as your government, we are investing money in the most effective way and in ways that are benefiting the most number of people. 
And as a, Steve Verzansky will be happy to hear this, as a, as a taxpayer advocate, I was also very proud this year to, uh, to be one of only 15 members of the legislature, and actually the only Democrat, uh, to receive 100% rating from the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. I, uh, I also was, uh, was the recipient of the Orange County Taxpayers Association Rose Award for my work in, um, fiscally, in fiscal responsibility and for my work in protecting Prop 13 uh, and protecting the taxpayers of Orange County. So that is something that we're also proud of for, the, for our first year. And in addition to the work that, that my team does on the policy and legislative side, uh, another major area of focus for us is constituent services. One of the reasons that I ran for office was I had a sense that our district was getting shortchanged by Sacramento. And that was why I made it a big focus to ensure that I was passing legislation that was benefiting this community and that we were bringing resources back to this district. I was able to secure $18.6 million in funding in the 2019 and 2020 budget. Uh, we talked about some of the programs that we've been able to fund with the Orange County Fire Authority with the Orange County United Way. I also secured funding for the restoration of the final phase of the uh, historic cottages at Crystal Cove right here in Newport Beach. And that, can, that is an absolute treasure, not just for the community of Newport Beach, but for California as a whole. And my team here in the district, I think, uh, Liz, go ahead and give a wave. I think many of you know my amazing district director, Liz McNam. Let's give her a, a round of applause. My team is here in this district to make government work better for the people that we serve. We have district office hours in every single city that I represent every month. Uh, when are we here in Newport Beach? We're so we're here in City Hall the second Thursday of the month, but we're available anytime that you need us. If you have an issue with a state agency or department, if you're struggling to get something done, we are here to help. We've been able to help constituents with challenges with the DMV, with challenges with licensing, and with many other issues. So please know we are a resource for this community, and it is our number one job to serve the people that I represent. As I reflect on the year ahead, I think my assessment is that California is absolutely facing some very real and very tough challenges, but I remain incredibly optimistic about the future for Orange County and about the future for California. I believe that we will be able to tackle these hills together, that we'll be able to meet these challenges, and I genuinely believe that California's most successful and prosperous days are still to come. And I wanna thank all of you for the role that you play in this community, for your leadership as business owners, for your leadership as job creators, and for everything that you do to make this community so vibrant and so successful. I am grateful for your partnership and look forward to working with you as we make California stronger and Orange County better than ever. Thank you. Thank you. Never known, never known so many people to know what Rena numbers are. It's good. It is good. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so thank you all for coming. I just want to remind you that uh, the mayor's, shh, hold it down for those who want to hear it. Mayor's reception, shh, mayor's reception is next Tuesday after the city council meeting. We'll be appointing a new mayor here in Newport Beach. Boat Parade starts Wednesday, October, or sorry, December 18th through the 22nd at Newport Harbor. And uh, with that, we'll see you next year for our next Wake Up Newport. I think January 5th, I want to say, or 7th or something. Have a great holiday. Thank you.